Hey, what's up everyone? I have a really special video for you today. I'm looking at John Sher Khan, one of the most legendary players ever, and honestly one of the guys I watched frame by frame as a teenager in front of my computer with a racket in my hand trying to emulate his game. So I'm really, really actually happy and excited to be able to share this with you today. And what I've basically done is I've taken a couple of video clips of John Sher and I'm going to show you one element of his tactics. But before we get to that, I got to talk to you about one of the key things for squash, and that is creating and setting up patterns and then breaking patterns. So that's number one. The second key thing is to be able to hit multiple shots from the same position. Now, what this does is that when you do the same thing over and over, your opponent, whether it's conscious or subconscious, starts to register what shot you're going to hit. Now, if they, let's say, for example, you're in the back left and every time out of that back left, you hit a cross court. Well, your opponent's probably going to start shifting over on the tee towards the right because they're going to start volleying that cross court. Now, what would happen if all of a sudden you hit a cross court and you also have a straight drop option from the back? Or even simpler, you have the cross court and just the straight drive option. Well, now your opponent has to be a little bit more honest on the tee and they have to centralize themselves on the tee because they don't know whether they could have to go left for the straight drive or they have to go right for the cross court. So that's this idea of having multiple shots. So multiple shots create natural deception and it forces your opponent to be totally honest. Now when we talk about patterns, you could have many shots and still play with certain patterns. So for example, most players when you go to the front right, if you're a forehand, like a righty, you can probably hit a drop shot or something other than a cross court. But what do most of us do when we go into that front right? We go there and we bash a cross court because physically, mechanically, it's probably the easiest shot to execute. By playing to those patterns, what ends up happening is, similar to the options that we just discussed, your opponent ends up cheating or reading or anticipating what you're going to do now all of a sudden if you break that pattern your opponent is now left and they're confused and they don't know what's going to happen so what we're going to show you with John Sher is how he uses shot options and this idea of breaking patterns to mess with Jahangir's movement from this 1990 match from the Menin Cup this is courtesy of PSA Squash TV. If they didn't record these videos, then uh, we wouldn't be able to analyze them. So here we go. Let's check it out. I'm going to play uh, three clips in regular speed, and then we're going to play them at quarter speed so you can see everything. So clip number one. Clip number two. Clip number three. Okay, so I know that that did not look like very much, but check it out. Now we're gonna slow it down a little bit and you can see how much is going on in those two, three second clips. The first one's a bit longer because I wanted to show you the follow-up sequence from a tactical perspective as well. So here's clip number one. So John Sher gets ready. He's got a nice racket prep. So you can see his racket prep is nice and high. It looks like a straight drive. And then at the last second, he goes through and he cuts that ball. And Jahangir has to go cover the front of the court with a powerful movement. Now notice this. As soon as Jahangir is hitting the ball, John Sher is on the tee and he's engaged in a split step and he's ready to pounce on the next ball. Look at his racket position. He's got that racket ready so that he can go up. It's not dangling by his feet, it's at his waist almost. I mean, it's not quite at his waist, but it's ready, it's up here, it's not down. So he can adjust in any position and look for the volley from there. So now you see him get ready and then he pounces on the ball. Now check this out. He's hitting the ball and Jahangir is still moving backwards. So John Sher is getting on the ball a bit early 
Jahangir was a little bit slow coming out because he was under a lot of pressure going into the front. And you can see that Jahangir's movement, his momentum is going back. Jahanshir is hitting the ball. So watch it. It messes Jahangir up. Now he has to make this other explosive movement going into the front of the court to get the next ball. He has to defend. And what's Jahanshir doing? He's jumping on the volley. And again, he's not letting Jahangir settle. He's jumping on the volley. Jahangir is constantly moving around. And Jahangir is off again. And it's only now when Jahangir's length actually gets all the way back that John Sher now has has to reset. And this is the idea. This is one mistake that a lot of players make is that when when we're on the aggressive side of things, when we're attacking, we get into this mindset where we're like, attack, 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 attack. We have to win, 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 win. But when someone, when your opponent hits a good ball and they actually reset the rally, we have to respect that shot and in our own minds, step away from that attacking mentality and instead think of what I've written over here. Think of yourself as being a boxer. So you know in boxing, sometimes you'll see a boxer go in and there's a pop, 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 a few jabs, a few shots here and there and they kind of put some work into their opponent and then they back away. And then they go in and they pick their measure and they get a few more shots in and then back away because they know they're putting some work into their opponent every time. That's the idea with squash as well. So now John Sher has recognized that and now he's sort of reset and he's, he's ready to just play. So now the next rally that we're gonna see, and actually before I even go to the next rally, Try to think of squash not as a sprint, but a marathon. Actually, it's a marathon with a bunch of mini sprints. So this analogy of the boxer, it's actually a really powerful analogy because you're not trying to go for the knockout right away because chances are you're not gonna be able to wipe your opponent out 11-0, 11-0, 11-0. You're gonna have to put those jabs in. You're gonna have to work them out of position. You're gonna have to put some work into their legs so that their thought process starts breaking down, their movement starts breaking down, their technique starts breaking down. Everyone has a different threshold. The fittest players in the world, their threshold is really, really high and it takes a ton of work at a ton of pace and a ton of pressure before they start faltering and making errors. The lower the level, the lower that threshold is. So it's a, it's a matter of figuring out your opponent's threshold in many ways, knowing your own threshold, increasing your threshold, and breaking your opponent's threshold. So with that in mind, let's check this out. So now you've seen one example where John Sher put that drop shot in from the back. So in Jahangir's mind, and this is, that was just one example, He's, he does it all match long. In Jahangir's mind, he knows, okay, John Sher is deadly putting that drop shot in from the back, so I gotta be ready to cover that front. So let's see what happens. You can see an example of what that looks like now. So now you're gonna see John Sher getting ready. He's got that nice high back at, uh, racket prep again. And then check this out. So see Jahangir's split step is such that because he knows that front is so deadly, he's put his right foot back. And that's essentially how he's gonna push forward because he knows he has to cover that front. But instead, John Cher hits a drive. So let's see. So see Jahangir has to stop and just put his foot down, put the brakes on, and then readjust and move to the back to cover the length. Now that may seem like a very, very trivial thing, but if you do that 50 times, 100 times throughout the course of a match, it's like that analogy of the boxer. It's a jab every time, and that jab is taking its toll, and eventually it's gonna force you to succumb. So let's see one more example. So we're just gonna go to the next video here. There it is. So now John Shear is getting ready. And again, look, nice high racket prep. And another little hold. So Jahangir's foot, this one wasn't as extreme, but you see his foot is slightly back and his movement is slightly forward. And then he has to put the brakes on right there. And he has to push back again to recover. So let's summarize this. I put a bunch of notes over here just to make this a little bit easier as well. And hopefully it serves as a nice little reminder for you. If you hit multiple shots from the same position, you force your opponent to be honest. So keep that in mind. Try to develop multiple shots. It creates natural deception. 
Because if your opponent doesn't know whether a straight drive is coming or a straight drop is coming or a cross court drive is coming, they're always going to be a little bit hesitant and be on their toes. If they're flat footed, they're in trouble. If you add a hold on top of that, well, now you're really messing with your opponent. And that's what John Sher does, where he sets up and he goes for that drop and then he kind of pushes the ball through. So that's why Jahangir is going forward and then has to adjust and go back. Now, here's a little tip for you. Do a little analysis on your game. Pause and think for a second. Okay, from that back left, what shot do I always hit? From that front right, what shot do I always hit? Am I a one-trick pony or not? Truthfully, most of us are one-trick ponies, myself included, in many ways. But if you can figure that out, you can consciously start working on that. And here's the thing. Most of us, and I love this continuum, most of us are unconsciously incompetent at many things. That means we don't even know what we're not good at. We don't even know what we don't know. We're unaware. Once we become aware, and hopefully this video is making you aware of some things by forcing you to think about things, when you become aware of something, then you can oftentimes be consciously incompetent, meaning you know now, but you still don't know how to fix it or do it. Through practice, through some guidance, through some effort, through some coaching, you can become consciously competent, meaning when you really put your mind to it, you can execute it. And then over time, through repetition, we try to put that motor engram, we try to put that learning into our subconscious mind so that we can become unconsciously competent, meaning we can do it without even thinking twice. So that's one thing, that's a big thing I'm gonna challenge you on is to do that analysis of your own game and think about that continuum and think about how you can raise your awareness. And truthfully, this doesn't just apply to squash, it applies to every aspect of our lives. So I encourage you to think about that. So I'm gonna end it with this. You've seen the value of having multiple shots from the same position, and you've seen how that directly relates to this idea of patterns. Now, let's, I'll give you one last hypothetical example. Let's assume that you can hit a straight drive from the back left corner. I'm a right-handed player, so I'm gonna say a backhand. I can hit a straight drive, and I can hit a cross court drive from that back left corner. I might sometimes just play around and say, okay, I'm gonna hit four or five straight drives into this back left, and then my sixth shot, I'm gonna hit a cross court. What that's gonna do, and, and I'm speaking from experience, I coach a lot, and some of the kids I coach are quite high, uh, high level players too. They're top two, three in the country nationally. So we often end up doing sparring type sessions. And what I notice is if I hit two, three straight drives on one side, they start creeping and they start creeping more and they want to cut that ball off. They want to cut that volley off. And as soon as I notice that, that's when I play that boast. That's when I play that cross court drive and they're already taking a step towards the left and then they have to make a hard adjustment either forward or to the side and sometimes they're beat and I win the rally right away and other times they're under a tremendous amount of pressure and then I'm pushing up to the tee to pounce on that next ball so if you can expand your vision to and this takes practice right it's not going to happen overnight but if you can develop those shot options and then you can expand your vision by s deliberately creating patterns and then seeing what that's doing to your opponent and then changing that pattern, I think you're gonna get a ton of reward from this. The final thing I wanted to tell you about was this idea of natural deception. So if you notice from the videos, I kept pointing out the fact that John Cher was setting up with the same backswing every time. But from that same backswing, he cut the ball at the end and he hit the drop, or he extended through and he hit the drive. What happens is that when you have the same setup the same prep and you can execute multiple shots from there it creates natural deception so now if you couple this idea of natural deception from the same prep along with multiple shots it totally creates this idea and brings it full circle when you think about this idea of patterns and then breaking patterns so i would highly encourage you to think about how many shots can you hit from the same prep can you hit that drop or a drive from the same prep now obviously depending on how much pressure you're under things like that your preparation changes everything changes but at a high level if you're not under pressure how many options do you have how much natural deception do you have without all of the fancy holds and the flicks and the snaps and all of that kind of stuff something to ponder all right 
I hope you found value in that. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. Please like it. Please share the video. I'd love to hear your comments. Let's have a lively discussion about all of this. All right. Have a good one, guys, and I will see you in the next video.